Jesus. Lord, I need. I need your help. By myself. Lord, it just won't work. Lord, I need. I need your help. Oh, I need thee every hour. Oh, I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I
on this morning, Lord, hallelujah. We thank you for bringing us to the house, O oh Lord, Father. We thank you for protecting us, Lord, and giving us to the, your destination, O oh Lord, hallelujah. Lord, we ask you to touch this house, O oh Lord. Touch the pastor on today, Father, hallelujah, Jesus, to give a word to your people, Father, hallelujah. Continue to touch this house, O oh Lord, hallelujah, to be the lighthouse, the beacon for those people that are searching, O oh Lord. Searching for a change, O oh Lord, hallelujah. Searching for a new beginning, Lord, hallelujah. Prepare this house, O oh Lord, to receive them, hallelujah. That they may run and search and say, what must I do to be saved, Lord, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus, thank you. Looking for a new beginning, Lord, hallelujah. We bind fear, hallelujah. We bind heal and sickness, hallelujah. We bind everything, oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Take everything out of us, Lord, that's not lining up to you, O oh Lord, hallelujah. Forgive us for everything that we have said or done, oh, hallelujah. Search us clean, oh, Lord, hallelujah. Guard our footsteps, Lord, hallelujah, to do your will, Lord, hallelujah, Jesus. It's not about us, Lord. It's about you, Father, hallelujah. Thank you on today, hallelujah, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, hallelujah, Jesus. Glory. Good morning, New Beginnings. I'm Minister Jackson. I'm here to do your Old Testament scripture. I'm reading from Proverbs 12 and 24. I say again, Proverbs 12 and 24. And it says, the hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the short slothful shall never be under, shall be under tribute. What it's saying that those who work hard, they get to have control. They get to reign. They get to do what they want to do in God because they're putting in the work. But those who don't do anything, they're tribute. And what tribute means is you are forced into labor. So either you working for God or were you working for your body? You choose. You're going to be active or you're going to be lazy. But either way, you're going to be controlled. Pray my strength. Good morning, good morning. I am, I am out of breath, first of all. Uh, I, am, I am Lady Jones this morning, and I will be doing your New Testament scripture. I am reading Galatians 2 and 20. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith, uh, by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So the word that I looked up, y'all, was crucify, and it said to to, uh, destroy the power of. So that let me know that I had to allow God to destroy the power of Charzette so that I could be crucified with Christ. And just like Christ was crucified, he was beat. I got beat, but not like he was beat. But I had to crucify myself. I had to let God do the work in me so that I could live. So this life that I have right now is through God. Hallelujah. This life that I have right now is by faith. Hallelujah. So that lets me know, hallelujah, that if you want to live this life, you got to die to yourself. Hallelujah. You got to lie to die to what you want. You got to die to what you need and give all the glory to God so that he can have the the way in your life. Hallelujah. Pray my strength in the Lord, y'all. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right. I came briefly to talk about our women's conference. All right, this year's conference kicks off this Friday, y'all. So if you got your ticket, make sure you join us here at New Beginnings Ministries at 7 p.m. on Friday. Woo, excuse me. I'm like Pastor First Lady Jones. I got to catch my breath. Woo, between this mask and praising God, woo, I'm glad he kept me on my feet. Amen. So, again, I apologize, y'all. Let me gather my thoughts. This Friday, 7 p.m., we kick off our women's conference, The Strength of Us. Hallelujah. This year's theme is It's Harvest Time, and I decided to read this morning the theme scripture for our conference to you. Deuteronomy 24, 19 says, when you reap your harvest in your field and forget a sheaf in the field, you shall not go back to get it. It shall be for the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow, that the Lord your God may bless you in all your work. So when we're reaping, if you forget something, leave something behind for your sister. 
Leave something behind for the person who's trying to figure it out. Leave something behind for the old you that's coming up. Hallelujah. Because you didn't have it all together when you were working in the field. Amen. We didn't have it all together when we were trying to figure out how to reap this harvest that God had given us. Hallelujah. So when you leave something behind, leave it for your sister so that she may come up behind you. Hallelujah. Whoo, that's our theme this year, you guys. And I know it's been a little slow kicking it off, and we've done a lot of things online because we haven't been in person. But I really, really, really beseech you, therefore, brethren, that you join us on Friday night. Amen. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that you join us on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. to hear the awesome word from very own Pastor C, our very own servant leader, Charmaine Wheaton. Hallelujah. And First Lady Sandra Harris of Bethesda. Amen. So please join us. If you haven't bought your ticket, we do have a few more left online, but we are done with the T-shirts. Amen. But we do have a few tickets left online. So again, Friday night, this Friday, here at New Beginning, 7 p.m. That part is open to the public. If you bought your ticket, please join us. If you did not buy a ticket, again, it is open, but we are closing the doors at a certain number. So I beseech you, therefore, brethren, to be on time. Amen. This is not the place for late folks. We will be enforcing stuff because we still have to remain safe during COVID. It ain't over. I don't want us to get laxed and loose. Amen. So Saturday morning, if you bought your ticket, you will be allowed entry. If you do not buy your ticket, um, but by the time we read our numbers for the hundred, like I say, we only got a handful left. They'll probably be gone by the end of this service. We will not allow you to come in on Saturday again because we have to keep with our numbers. Sunday morning at 9 a.m., we have our very own Mother Freeman preaching to us on Sunday. Amen. Again, Sunday morning is open to the public. Same thing. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, to be on time. Amen. Because if you're not on time, we will have to close the doors or we will not allow entry. Keep them with the protocols because it's very important to our pastor that everyone remains safe. Amen. So, again, what's Friday, y'all? Man, y'all, y'all lost all that zeal. All that zeal. All right, we're going to do this again. Okay. When I say what's Friday... Y'all say the women's conference starts at 7 p.m. All right. What's Friday, y'all? The women's conference starts at 7 p.m. All right. Y'all pray my strength in the Lord. I'll see you all on Friday. Good morning, family. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. I just want to welcome you guys out to our Sunday service. It's so good to see so many of you in the house and those on Facebook. I can't wait to welcome you back in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. But I just want to let you guys know you may be home, but God is still there with you. I woke up this morning with a praise in my heart. Hallelujah. And I came to church and God met me here, but it started at home. So for those of you at home, know God is there with you. And praise God with us while we praise him in here. Pray my strength in the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, we're on assignment today. And our assignment is to give him a praise. Our assignment is to lift him up. Our assignment is to set the atmosphere. Come on and give him a hand clap of praise. Come on, that's all we got. We ain't got long, that's all we got. Hallelujah. All he want is a sacrifice. Is that all right? And I believe we got that. Amen. First, I want to give honor to the Lord. You may take your seats. Give honor to God. Give honor to Pastor, First uh, Pastor Smith, First Lady Smith, and everybody in their respective places. Amen. Truly, it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord on today. I'm Evangelist Ransom, and I will be conducting your service on today. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let's give God a double praise for the, uh, that. Not for me, but because we want to give him a sacrifice of praise. I don't need anybody to clap for me. But we got to give that praise and honor and the glory to God. My, my God. At this time, if you could please stand, we're going to go into our mission statement. Amen. You can see it to your monitors to the left and to your right. At the count of three, let's read. One, two, three. New Beginnings Ministries is committed to glorifying God. By giving spiritual hope, tools for economic success, and empower and excellence worldwide. And now we're going to do our core, our core values, which is our curves, on three, one, two, three. Commit to spiritual freedom. Utilize spiritual tools and guidance. 
refuse to stay the same, value results and relationships, excel by surpassing ordinary standards, and serve everyone with good dignity and respect. And today we want to commit ourselves to spiritual freedom because we want to offer God a sacrifice of praise. Come on and put your hands together for true worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all know we've been challenged to praise, right? That praise got to come from the inside. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's just give God praise right now. Hallelujah. Don't wait for me to start singing. Hallelujah. Get your own song in your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let praises rise from the inside, from the inside of me. May you delight in the inside, in the inside of me. Come fill my life from the inside, from the inside of me. Send me on fire from the inside, from the inside of me. Cause all I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be
Come on, give me a little clap. Let me go. Let me go.
sing it with me. Trust in love.
sacrifice of praise. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I Just trust in the Lord. At this time, we're going to prepare for our offering. Hallelujah. It's offering time, new beginnings. Deacon, what you sow? At this time, you're in the hands of the deacon. Here we all please stand. You're now in the hand of our church.
love you. Bless all those who are able, uh, unable to give. Bless all those who have been online and wherever else they are present. We love you. We thank you so much. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. And if everybody can remain standing or please stand as we bring up our pastor, Pastor Bobby Smith. I want to put your hands together as he comes. Amen. Let's give God a hand praise. Um, you may take your seats. Uh, before we get into the awesome word of God this morning, we have a presentation. Um, for those of you that don't know, we have a class um, that is taught by our very own Mother Cooper. Amen. And she teaches a class for those who have a desire to teach. So if you know that God has called you to be a teacher, amen, then uh, we have a class for you. A class that you could come and get perfected in your gift. Because how many of y'all know you just don't get up and teach one day? Even when you have the gift, amen? You need to be educated. You need to be trained. So we have our first graduates of our first teaching class, amen? And so at this time, we would like to put it into the hands of Mother Cooper and her staff, amen? Good morning. Ah, oh, there's a difference. Amen. Today, as Pastor said, we have our first teacher's class graduation. And this teacher's class, the emphasis was on teaching techniques. And the students who are all licensed and people who are called and, and have a calling on their lives in the first class, they were so submissive and they received everything that was taught. And I just love the way that they progressed through the class to be able to see the progress and to know that God was in the midst as we went through this class. I'm going to call their names and Brother Murphy, if you would give me my music now. Uh-huh. I present to you the first graduating class for teaching. Amen. certificate on today. It reads certificate of completion awarded to for outstanding scholarship in the teaching techniques course. April 18th, 2021. New Beginnings Ministry, Church of God in Christ, North Las Vegas, Nevada. Teresa Ball Cooper, Director of Education, Bobby Smith, Pastor. So, Pastor, I present to you Sophia Duffy.
Tracy Hales. Demario Hall. Demetrius Jackson. <laughs> Tammy Jackson. <laughs> Ed Kelly Jones. Evangelist Sharitha Rieger. Missionary Josephine Langford. Andresha Scott. Terrence Thompson. And last but not least, Walter M. X. William. I'd like to also appreciate those who have worked with me during this period, and my secretary, Evangelist Payton, our treasurer, Evangelist Krieger, and we have new staff this year. I have an assistant, and that's none other than Evangelist Scott. Amen? And then we also have our communications external person, and that is <laughs> missionary LaDana Spellman. Amen? And she's not present on today, but uh, Evangelist Marks also works with us, and we appreciate each one of them. Would you please give our graduates another round of applause? And we want to take one more picture, and I'm going to ask if this line would step up and come. This line would step behind them, and Pastor and I would be in the middle. For our new teaching class, awesome stuff. We're truly honored, amen, to be a part of that. How many of y'all know that anybody can say they are? But once God says you are, now you need to go get training to make sure you can be who you are called, amen, to be. And here at New Beginnings, we have a ton of training for you. Whatever you feel your place is, amen, we want to help you get there, amen. Having said that, we have started our basic training class, and I'm excited about my basic training people. Yes, uh, we had a little rough start, but when we got going, we got going. Amen. 
and they are learning. We are growing. Um, we will also be having another class um, that will be held by an, uh, Evangelist Scott, and she will be teaching you how to break down the Word of God. So if you are one of those people, you might be new in Christ. You might say, Pastor, when I read it, I just don't understand it. Is anybody there? All right, so we have a class for you, a very simple class, a method God gave me years ago, and it has helped me study the word and break it down. So I, I, I truly believe that it will help you as well. Amen? Amen. A couple of things that I just want to highlight as well, um, that scripture class that uh, Evangelist Scott will be teaching, if you could just wave your hand, where is she? Uh, just stand so everyone can see you. Please see her after church if you want to learn how to break the word down. It'll be just a two-week class, and she will be giving you great information. She has mastered the uh, process, and so amen for her. The class is filling up, so please come quickly as you can to be a part. Um, our new teaching training class will start May 11th. So if you say, Pastor, I believe God has called me to teach or preach the gospel, this is a mandate that you must take here at New Beginnings. We have classes that get you to the pulpit. Amen. Um, we have uh, experienced people who are just saying that I can and, you know, I will. Um, but without the proper teaching, you're just talking. Because there's a lot that comes with preaching the gospel. Amen. And you can um, uh, see that on our board. I'm sorry, on our screens that that teaching class starts May 11th, so you can be the second class, as you've seen the first, uh, be a part of that. Um, another quick note, Bible study will start in person on uh, May 4th. We will start having Bible study back at New Beginnings. Amen. So I know a lot of you have had a whole year and some change to rest and not come to church. However, it is time for us to change our uh, spiritual gears Amen. And start getting back in the house of God. Governor Sisolak will be opening up Las Vegas June 1st. Amen. It has been a trying time. We have lost a lot. Amen. But sometimes it's time to move forward. Amen. And I have been a stickler of the rules and the, um, the mandates COVID had set. And we have followed the governor this whole time, which we are supposed to do. Obey those that have rule over us. And so when he opens the floodgates, uh, we will still wear masks, but we are allowed to congregate. Amen. Those of you who um, have took your vaccines, praise the Lord. Those of you who don't want to take it, praise the Lord. Those of you who are in the middle and don't know what to do, take the vaccine. Amen. Just pastor's thoughts. Um, I have taken it. My mother's taken it. Many of us have taken it. We're still here. Amen. Nobody's shaking like a chicken or barking like a dog. So I think we are all right. Um, for those of you who say, pastor, I don't do vaccines, you actually do. You just didn't realize it. Because when you're born, you must take certain vaccines in order to be an American. Amen. So they were just unbeknownst to you, but you have a shot record like most of us have who have been to school. Is that right? Your shots are nothing but vaccines that they have put in you so that you cannot uh, either catch or display certain diseases that um, can be fatal. Amen. So we truly thank God for that. And also, we need volunteers for our We Got It Wednesdays. Um, we are helping over 150 to 200 families a Wednesday. There are people who are still financially struggling who need money. The stimulus check, if you used it for what you used, was supposed to, you should be broke already because it was used to catch up on bills, amen? That means we were behind and the money was spent before we got it. Um, those of you who want to live in poverty, I'm sure you bought you an outfit instead. But for those of us who really want to live this life more abundantly, we use the money for what it was for. Amen. To catch up. Pastor Smith, personally, I hate spending money on food. My wife will tell you she has had to beg me at times to buy groceries because to me it doesn't make sense to buy something that you're going to eat up anyway. Amen. And then I'm going to have to buy it again. And it just seems like a bad purchase to me. Um, so... What <laughs> true story, amen. Um, to buy $500 worth of groceries makes zero sense to me. You're going to eat it up and eat another 500 in a week or two, amen. So I try to find free food where I can. And so we got it Wednesdays is right here at our church. Saints, when I tell you we got it, we got it. Um, you can get prime rib, steaks, ground turkey, ground beef. You can get fish. Uh, I just got some um, salmon fillets. Uh, 
We got French fries. I mean, if you name it, you can get it here. So my question or my thought for you is why spend money on food when you don't have to? This food is just not for those who are in need, who you don't have food stamps or, you know, uh, opportunity. This is for anyone who needs food. I'd rather get free food worth $100 than go spend $100 and get food. Amen? Where I'm from, that's called common sense. Uh, all my hu Any hustlers in the house, amen. I was born a hustler. I got to make ends meet. So this hundred can go on electric bill, and we got it Wednesdays. Y'all will see me next Wednesday. Amen. Um, to collect all that food that they have, we have so much food, we have to give it away twice. Sometimes Thursdays, we have to give it away again. Is there anything that we have a plethora of at this time? Or is it all gone? Okay, they came and got it. Good. So, But sometimes we have some left over, and we want you to get it. It's quality food. Amen. The egg rolls were off the chain. I still have some in my freezer. Three-minute meal, put the grease on it, bring it out, let it drip. It's a hot egg roll. Get you some sauce. You got a dinner. Amen. Uh, egg, egg, egg supreme. Egg roll supremes. All right. Put some barbecue sauce on it if you're from where I'm from. Amen. And just enjoy yourself. Is that all right? Um, but these things need to be heated, too. Um, also, Tuesdays, we're going to stop. Uh, well, come June 1st, we will stop our Facebook Lives on Sunday. Um, this is to encourage for one month we're going to stop, and this is to encourage uh, people to come back to church. Amen? The Bible didn't say how good and pleasant it is for us to watch Facebook together. It said for us to dwell together. That means we need to see each other, and we need to make sure that one another are all right. Amen? The Bible also said do not fail to what? Assemble yourselves. Let's not make Facebook Jesus for us. Amen? We thank God for the means while we couldn't come together. Oh, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. So we want to come back together and make sure that we are living out the scriptures. Amen? Amen. And like my mother told me the other day, she said, baby, real church, Facebook ain't got nothing on real church. It's like, and I'm sure Mother Langford them feel the same. When you get into the house of God, ah, oh, what a difference it makes. Amen? To see your brothers and sisters in Christ and know that everything is going to be all right. What I want to talk about today, amen, is a very uh, personal message, but at the same time, I think it's a blessing that we all need to uh, understand and grasp and then see what God has. Uh, the theme today is going to be the sacrifice of praise. And the word that I want to hit on is the sacrifice of it. Amen. Because a lot of times we tell people to make a sacrifice of praise, but people really don't understand the sacrifice. Amen. So I want to break that thing down before I get into it too deep. I want to give you an intro. Amen. How many of you came today and you were feeling some kind of way? If you know, if you've been in our church long enough, you know pastor got that way. I'm just feeling some kind of way. Anybody feeling some kind of way is a funny thing because it doesn't mean that you're feeling good. It means that you're in like a little a funk, as they call it, right? You wake up and you're just feeling some kind of way. And so we only got a handful of people. Hey Amen. How many of y'all had some issues this week? Hey Amen. Just had some stuff that didn't go right this week. Hey Amen. How many of y'all just had a bad week? No bad weeks in God. Put your hands down. Put your hands down. Because that week is going to work together for what? For your good. How many have had tough weeks this week? Amen? Well, then here's what we do. Uh, us as Christians, there have, God has given us an instruction. And he said, I need you to bring the sacrifice of praise. And when I looked at it, I was like, God, how can your praise be a sacrifice? He said, because some days you're going to have some I'm just in some kind of mood today, or I'm feeling some kind of, for those days, it becomes what? A sacrifice. Even days when you're feeling good and you feel so good, you just don't want to be at church. <laughs> oh, I'm just talking to myself. Sometimes when you got a lot of money and you got opportunities, the last place you want to be in is in church. You want to be on somebody's island, somebody ocean. So, uh, okay, just Pastor Smith, is it just me? Amen. And so you come into church and your mind is elsewhere. That's when it's time to what? Give God a sacrifice of praise. Some of you might have loved ones that are dying right now. Amen. Or that are in the balance. You don't know uh, what they're going through or how they're going to get out of it. And so you come to church heavy. Amen. Really coming, asking God to do something. And it's hard for you to get into the praise because your spirit is so heavy. Amen. Some of you have might have had relationship problems. And when you walked in the door, you saw your spouse and just did one of these 
like, whatever, amen, and just came to church anyway. And then when the praises start, it's hard for you to get out of the box. Are y'all with me? Have you ever seen somebody try, trying to get out of the box and struggling? Let me give you an example. Have you ever seen Double Dutch? Is anybody from the old school where they used to Double Dutch? I know the ladies with me, right? Men, I learned to Double Dutch because I lived in Germany, and it was cool for, German, for, for you to jump rope as a man in Germany. I just didn't realize when you came to America, it wasn't that cool, amen? But back then, we would call it getting out of the box, and y'all know the jump rope go like this, the Double Dutch, right? And you know that you're supposed to jump when it goes what? Open. Is that right? So what we find ourselves doing is catching the rhythm of it, right? Right? And when it opens, we counting on ourselves, right? One, two, three. Oh, oh, oh. Right? And you do whatever you're going to do, amen? But have you ever had somebody who just couldn't get out the box? They, they just kept doing this, and you like, come on. And they like, I'm trying to catch it, but I just can't catch it. Have you ever been to church, and you're doing this? You want to get in, you're trying to get in, but you just can't catch the right opening. Come on, talk to me, somebody, for you to really get your praise on. That's when you have to step into the what? The sacrifice of praise. What are you saying? God is saying, I need you to praise when you don't feel like it. I need you to clap your hands when you don't want to be bothered. Is there anybody in here? I, I need you to praise when you got a loved one on their deathbed. Is that all right? I need you to praise when all you can think about is what happened this week. I need you to praise when you ain't got a pity to put in the offering. God said, can anybody in here come with a sacrifice of praise? What does that mean? It's not always going to be easy to get into your praise. It's not always, you're not always going to feel the presence or your help coming. Amen. Sometimes you got to clap in praise until your help comes. I got a real praiser in here that understands it may not be my song. I might not even know the song, but I'm going to clap until I feel something. I'm going to sacrifice what I got going so I can give God what he deserves. Have you ever planned to go somewhere and realize your child had practice? Okay, just me. And you have to tell, like, look, y'all, I, I can't go. I wanted to, but my son has. So you what? You sacrifice what you want to do for the needs of someone what? Who needs to get it done through you. Amen? God is saying, I need you to sacrifice everything you're going through to give me a praise because I can fix what you going through. And so if you can put that to the side and lift your hands and your head toward heaven and open your mouth and tell me the things that I love to hear, when I get joy out of your praise, my joy becomes your strength. For the joy of the Lord is my If the joy of the Lord is my strength, then what gives God joy then turns and gives me strength. Hmm. And when I woke up this morning, God said, I wish somebody would praise me for real. Huh. So now we go to Psalms 22 and 3. And I want to walk you through these scriptures so you understand that I'm just not here making something up. Pastor got better things to do than that. Amen. Uh, Psalms 22 and 3 says, but thou art what? Holy. Holy simply means completely devoted. Don't, 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 don't run from the word holy. Amen. Complete devotion. That means it's con consecrated for a purpose. Amen. But thou art holy, O thou that what? Inhabitest the praises of Israel. Well, pastor, Israel is not us. I'm glad you asked. Yes, it is because we have been engrafted in. So when we have been engrafted in, when you say Israel, you might as well say us. Amen. Because there is no difference between what Jew or Greek we are all children of who of God so what they have we can have amen so God says first thing he says is I will inhabit your praise so what we have to understand is when we're up here giving God this old two minute you know uh put your fingers together we're not even clapping with the palms we done got bougie we just tapping fingertips together amen God don't you know that God is judging your praise he's judging it to see if it's something that he wants to inhabit let me, let me open the door for you. There were some of you who gave God a praise that he wasn't interested in today. Because some of you were caught up in what? What you got going on, or it wasn't my song, or I don't know this. And you missed the point of what praise is for. Are y'all with me on that? So then after that, we go to Hebrews, the 13th chapter. And we read verses 15, I'm sorry, verse 15. 
and it says this, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of what? Praise. He said, to God when? Continually, that is. Now, he, specific, he specified what it is. Amen. He said, the fruit of our lips. Some of you have been here all morning and you have not given God a praise with your lips. Maybe it's because your mask on and you don't think God can hear you. Amen. Well, let me tell you, his ear is inclined to you and he can hear your muddled praise in your mask. Amen. Even if you say, God, I thank you and you say it at volume 1.1, God can still hear your praise. Amen. But how dare you close your mind and have the nerve to think praise? The Bible said as long as you have lips and a voice, you praise him with your what? With your lips. That means somebody next to you should hear you saying, Lord, I thank you. And the problem is we have too many people who are tentative, who are nervous when it comes to praising God, but the devil is doing it because he understands if I can make you nervous not to praise him in front of them, then you'll never feel the inhabitation of praising him. And if he never inhabits, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but we're going to get into that in a minute. That is the fruit of our lips, uh, giving thanks to his name continually. And then, uh, uh, so what I want to do is I want to break this down, this scripture right here. And I want to first understand that it's an offering. Let us offer. It's an offering and a sacrifice. Amen. He says, let us offer. And offer, offer simply means to present as an act of worship. And I thought about that. When you offer someone something and it's as an act of worship or relationship, what did you just give God this morning? If it's built on relationship, if your praise is built on relationship, what have you given God this morning? So, for instance, if a stranger comes to my house and knocks on the door, I'm going to say, hey, how you doing? Ha, ha. They don't get across my door. Excuse me, what would you like? Because you don't get in the gate. You just get to the door. If my mother comes to my house, as soon as she comes, I just open it up. It's already established. When she comes to my house, she's not coming to stand at the door. So if I stand at the door and act funny, she's just going to walk right by me. Because she knows what? I have a what? Stake in this place. I've been here before. Relationship gives me what? Access to this house. Amen? So now when she comes in the house, she becomes an inhabitant of the house. Because now everything in the house, what? She has access to. And in the house, she can choose whether she wants this that's in the house or if she doesn't want that that's in the house. Does she want them, them ribs that her son be cooking that a finger looking good? There's choices in the house. When she's in the house, she can see the condition of the house. Every house looks nice on it. Well, some houses look nice on the outside. For those of us who beautify the outside, see, when, you, when God inhabits your praise, he comes on the inside. I hear you, Holy Ghost. God says some of y'all scared to praise him because you don't want him in your house. But when we know someone who belongs or who has spent time in our house, we welcome them. And we say things like, oh, I'm glad you're here. Oh, hey, come on. Your praise represents God standing at the door and knocking and you opening the door. Are you going to invite him in with your praise? Which means are you going to praise God for real? Are you going to let go of your foolishness and give God what he deserves? Are you going to make praise a real sacrifice? And see, I love people who have to come in and fight their way into praise. I used to love when I, was, when I first got saved and I came in and I wasn't feeling well because it challenged me to push past my flesh and to praise God for who he is in my life. Regardless of what has happened, I praise him for who he is. So I offer not only that, if you're a stranger in my house working on my uh, 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 garbage disposal, I might offer you a drink. I might. Are you thirsty? I usually offer if they out. Well, I offer all the time, but you know what I'm saying. Sometimes if they get outside, I offer them a little more, you know. But when my mother's in my house, she don't got to ask. She be like, 
Y'all get me some. I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. Can I have some of that? Are y'all with me? Before the other person who don't belong there, they're going to wait for what? For me to offer. But a person who belongs there, they come and they what? They start asking. What am I saying? When you begin to praise God, amen, and you're praising him for real, then he knocks on the door and says, hey, it's me. And depending on how you really have the relationship you have, it determines if he gets in the door or not. Amen. But I'm here today to tell you, you could have just met God today. But if you got a praise in your belly and you can let go and forget those things that are behind you, you can say, God, I just met you, but come on in. And you'll find out that he's just like family. Have you ever met somebody and like, man, it seems like I've been knowing you all my life. But you have to be willing to make the what? The sacrifice of praise. And what I found out is the church does struggles because we look at praise as entertainment. Most churches, they bring their praise team up and you just clap like you at the Smith Center. But how many of y'all know that's not where, why we're here today? When we come into new beginnings, it's not so that y'all can clap for their praise. It's so you can just get started. Are y'all with me? In track, they have somebody called a pace setter. And all the pace setter does is just run out so that everybody can get a good pace. That's all the praise team is, is a pace setter. Amen. They just say, here's the song, now y'all do something with it. And see, there was a time that our church would out sing the praise team. Because they knew why they were really there. They weren't there to hear how good they sound. They, they sound pretty good, if you ask me. But at the end of the day, your sound is only what? Helping my voice find a note so that I can sing out of pitch anyway. I'm going to sing in D-sharp whether it's D-sharp or not. Because y'all got to sing because y'all been perfected. God told me to make a joyful noise. Because I realize it's not about how I sound. It's about access into my home. Are y'all with me? And I want God to inhabit my praise. I need an inhabitation this morning. So now we look at the word offer, amen, is to present, to present for acceptance or rejection. And that's the thing. When you praise God, don't you know you give him your all so he can accept it? Some of y'all think that a couple hand claps that God is pleased with you. And then you have the nerve to say, ooh, church was good, not for you. Because you didn't feel the presence of God. God didn't inhabit your praise. He didn't do nothing for you. You just saw everybody else blessed. Ooh, God bless folks today. Where, why ain't your mascara running? Why haven't you sweated your shirt out? Oh, because you are watching people get blessed. And some way in our minds, we think we're going to be able to stand in front of God and say, God, I watch. I spent 15 years watching all your people get blessed. And God said, but why couldn't I bless you? Oh, because your praise wouldn't let me in. How many of y'all praises didn't let God in this morning? How many of y'all praises stopped right at the door and God is still knocking right now? That's how you can leave church one way and leave out the door the same way. Because you lost it in your praise. Because you forgot to make a sacrifice. Are we learning today here? Sacrifice is the killing of a victim on an altar. And when I thought about that, I said, God, that's kind of harsh. You want to make a sacrifice of praise? That means something got to die. He said, yeah, Pastor Smith, I need you to die on the altar. On the altar of your praise, I need you to die. I said, God, what are you saying? He said, because when you die, I can get a real praise out of you. When you die, you ain't got to worry about what people going to say when you get home. When you die, you'll roll up under this table, run around this church. You'll do the hokey pokey, turn yourself around if God said it. But, the, but, but for those of us that are on church watch or bougie, we don't want God too close to us because then somebody going to laugh at us. Like, they ain't laughing at your broke self now. People are laughing at you now, but you would rather what? You would rather uh, 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 miss the ridicule of people and, 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 in a sense, restrict God than to be what? Loose from people and let God have his way. God is saying, I'm looking for a praise today, a real one. And I'm crazy enough to believe that he's going to move in this church this morning in a mighty way. Somebody didn't come to praise today and go run right into it this morning. Are y'all with me? See, we love to talk church, but it's real church around here. You, you can talk a little bit, but eventually we're going to find you out. Oh, pastor, I'm a praiser. Well, why when you was down, you wasn't praising? Because praises bless the Lord at No one should ever look at your praise and tell what you're going through. But I bet you I can. Some of y'all look like a bump on the log this whole service. I can't wait till it's over. Shouldn't have came. 
See, I'm not one that's going to beg you to stay. You can go. It's a privilege to be in the house of God. It's a privilege for me to be in the house. I'm not going to cater to your foolishness. Your money can't guarantee you nothing. When you come in here, we all on the same accord to give God what? The praise that he deserves. Now, the Bible said where two or three are gathered, he would be in the midst. So what happens when 50, 60 people gather? What happens when 100 people gather? God will turn this city upside down if we understand why we're here and what praise is supposed to do in our lives. But everybody looked like. Oh, you know, I just came. No, I came to give God praise. I'm ready to sweat this stuff out, shout all over the place till my legs feel good. How many, anybody have an after church sleep? Oh, after church sleep is the best when you done shout it all over the place. You get pulled over by the police. What's wrong with you? Just got from church. Okay, go ahead. I understand. They looking at your ID. You don't look like your ID because you don't know where I've been. I done been to the mountaintop this morning, amen. I've basked in the presence of God this morning. And I implore you, those of you who have never experienced the presence of God, I dare you to start sacrificing with your lips so you can feel why we really do this. We ain't out here praising just to be praising. I'm looking for an inhabitation. I want God to accept my praise offering this morning. So I don't mind sacrificing these lips. I don't mind clapping these hands. I don't mind moving these feet. And if you ain't feeling me, excuse me. Because I don't know what you come to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Is there anybody in here? You don't know my story. You don't know what it took for me to get here. I gotta praise them. I have to praise them. My life is dependent on it. Come on, sit on down. You see, you had a chance. Come on, sit down. You had a chance to praise him, and you sat on him. And God is getting ready to move, so I want to leave you with something here. I want to let you know what inhabit means, okay? The habit means to occupy as a place. Oh, y'all didn't catch that. When you praise God, he occupies your body as a place. A place where he can get glory out of. When you start praising me, he said, that's a place that'll praise me with everything they got. When you in the corner saying, God, I need you right now. You're the best thing that ever happened to me, oh God. Where would I be without your love and mercy, oh God? I need you in my life right now, God. God says, that's the place. And the Bible said he occupies that place. How are we learning this morning? And the beauty about it, he said it's a, a settled residence. Oh, that got good to me, a settled residence. And the word settled means to establish. He said, when you praise me, I'll establish some things in your life. Uh, settle is to furnish with inhabitants. That means he said, I'll, I'll send some people to live and dwell where you're at. Amen. To make quiet or orderly. In your praise, you'll find order. Oh, come on. I'm going to say it again. In your praise, you find order. Now, I ain't talking about your praise. I'm talking about a Holy Ghost-induced praise. I'm talking about praising until that power kick in. Are y'all with me? And what it does, it orders your life. How many of you had a good praise, and after you're done, you just feel established? You just feel like life is in order. You don't know why you feel that way, but you, com you feel complete. And you walk out of here like, okay, I know what I got to do. Because to be 
absent from your body. Watch this. When you give up your praise, your praise, you become absent from your body. And God does what? He comes in and inhabits the place that you left. That's why you have to die to praise God. Are y'all with me? You have to give some stuff up to really praise God. And now his spirit begins to praise through you. So now whatever the spirit says you can have, it's yours. Oh, y'all ain't with me today. Oh, Pastor, you know what God told me? He said, when you're in perfect praise, you're perfect. Because when the Spirit of God is completely overtaking you, everything that's not like God has to get out the way. So for that time you're in the full presence of God, you're perfect in God's Because you're without sin for that moment. Are y'all with me? How do you not want to come to church and be in a place where your spirit is pure one more time? Where you're new all over again. When you're praising God, problems don't have power. And all you can say is, Lord, I thank you. Lord, you've been better than me than I can be to myself. How many of y'all know praise is personal? And see, the problem is we're in a corporate setting, but it's still a personal praise. Are y'all with me? And you got to understand the difference between corporate and personal. What are you saying, Pastor? The corporate setting, the praise team, they start a praise that you should take personal. And that's what God is saying. Y'all not taking praise personal. There's a promise attached to real praise. Praise will have the enemy in your life running in circles talking about what do I do with them. No matter what I try to do to them, they keep on praising me. I took their job. They just kept on praising them. Kids acting up, they just praise God right through it. Praise confuses the enemy because the enemy's job is to stop you from praising God. That's why when you're going through your stuff, the last thing you want to say is, Lord, I thank you. Will your praise be accepted this morning? Play me something soft real here. Will your praise be accepted this morning? Will it be accepted? What are you willing to give up this morning? What is standing in the way from you really getting what God has for you? Some of you haven't praised God in a long time and you're saying, Pastor, everything in me want to run around this church. But that's why I love my friend, Pastor Sonia Sheldonham. I don't know if y'all saw the other day to praise God good and she just took a lap. See, y'all ain't with me on that. Because some of y'all going to say, I don't know what they going to say if I run around the church. Or you can just run. Some of y'all say, what happens if I scream? Or you can just scream. I'd rather ask for forgiveness, praising God, than permission. Let me say that again. I'd rather come in off and say, Pastor, I'm sorry. Something got a hold of me. And I tried to keep it to myself. But I had to let it go. I hope it didn't mess up the service. And if you know me, I'm going to say, no, you just started the party. Is your praise for real? Because we love to give God this. Thank you, Jesus. That's all right, but that's not real. God said, I want to praise from your whole heart. I want you to praise me to where the Spirit kicks in and moves you out the way. And you don't even remember half what happened to you. You just know that you woke up feeling better, 10 pounds lighter, renewed, rejuvenated, and on fire for the Lord. Does anybody got a praise like that? Somebody said, all y'all do is praise, shout around when the music come on. I said, no, the music assists. The music didn't start nothing. I shout whether the music start or not. I just try to be in order a little bit. Is your praise for real? Just give me a light. Do, do, do. Just light right there. Just some real life. Yeah, right there. See this? People like laugh, make fun of our church beats. But what y'all don't know, this is the celebra celebration song. 
This is when church folks just get to act a plain fool in the house of God, in God's name. Amen. Are y'all with me? I ain't saying showing out, doing what you want. I'm talking about in the spirit of God. Because I've seen two people shout side by side and never bump each other in the spirit. I done seen people running the walls full speed and come and recover because they were in the spirit. Amen. Who really want to let go today? If you really want to let go today, I encourage you to come to the altar. If you really want God to bless you in your praise, I encourage you to come to the altar. Leadership, y'all get ready. And see, and see, let me tell you, if you really want it, you're going to come out, come in praising. You're going to already come with your eyes closed, understanding what you need from God. Spread on out. There's a song that says, when I think about Jesus and all that he's done for me. Let's slide down, slide down, slide down, slide down. The song says, I can dance all night. Hallelujah. 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 Let's make sure we, we scoot a little bit off the mothers a little bit here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me a listen. Just something nice and low. Just give me that. I want everyone on the altar to raise your hands. And repeat after me. Say, I want to give God a praise he'll accept. That means I got to get out of the way so he can get in the way. In the name of Jesus. Now, if you're in this altar, I want you to just start talking to God right now. I want you to start thanking him for everything he's done. I want you to start giving him your real praise in the name of Jesus. I want you to move your feet just left and right. Real nice. Up oh, there it is, right there. Go and let him have his way. Yes, Lord. Come when on, I yes, think Lord. about Jesus and yes, how Lord. he set me free, yes, I can dance, dance, yes, dance, dance. Come on, dance, give it all to him right now. Go on and give it all to him. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, oh, when I think about Jesus and what he's done to me, when I think about Jesus and how he set me free, I can dance, 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 dance. 